is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. <laughs> You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway to the minds, the souls, the hearts, the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. Hello. I am a live podcaster. I'm a South by Southwestern Indian. West. Yeah. Do, is there a word? I'm not saying a South buyer. I'm South. Oh, if I was into dudes, I'd be South by. Decent, decent joke. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am not sitting here live in my studio. In Chicago, Illinois. No, I am live at the South by Southwest J.W. Marriott Brazos podcasting room presented by TuneIn. Hello. (laughs) Did I, did I, thank you. Did I get all the sponsors and the names? Is there anything I'm missing? My favorite part of doing that intro, hold on, I'm going to get to my intro in a second. Before I go any further, this is a fan support and, and listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give you free charge every single Thursday on ColtCabana.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcast from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend, let somebody know. Uh, the best way that you can support, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads. Uh, uh, Wrestling Road Diaries 1, 2, and 3 are there. I have some new tchotchkes up uh, at the the new ColtMerch.com. That is a Yiddish word. It might not be a Yiddish word. That might be a Polish word. But in the Jewish uh, brethren, it's Yiddish tchotchke. That's one we throw around. Uh, And also afterwards, I have, uh, oh, this is a new one, (laughs) ColtMerch.Couch.com. Come over and see me afterwards. Anybody else? Uh, because this is brought by uh, TuneIn is sponsoring this podcast and the podcast stage, which I'm excited about. But also on the South by Southwest app, there was, uh, it said the Brazos room. Did anyone else think it was the Brazos room? <laughs> Thank you. And like, I'm all about getting some uh, sponsorship from TuneIn and maybe they'd give me uh, a free year or put me on their, <laughs> but oh, was I looking forward to those Brazos swag. Oh, Brazzers, for those of you who don't know, is a, uh, an adult... Well, I know you love them, sir. <laughs> and most of my demographic loves Brazzers. I can appreciate Brazzers. Uh, and, lady, I understand you said no. And I wasn't saying men is my demographic. I say anyone. I feel if you like wrestling and live action, uh, one-on-one, if you know what I'm saying, then you would be into a Brazzers. But some of the people... Not so much into it. Uh, but this is um, great. A live podcast. I'm super excited. Uh, the podcast, for those of you who have just walked in, have no clue kind of what's going on. This is the world of professional wrestling. I'm a wrestler. I've been wrestling a very long time, and we talk about the world of wrestling. I have fun guests come on, and uh, we're going to get right into it. I have uh, my first guest. He is um, a star of a show on Comedy Central called The High Court. He is, uh, has a podcast called Doug Loves Movies. And he is uh, an amazing stand-up comedian. Please welcome Doug Benson to the show. Hey, dude. <laughs> I'd say hi, Doug. And that would... Probably be accurate. Yeah. It's a very good it. chance. Yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day. And not only am I wearing the green, I have uh, a lot of green inside of me. There it is. Uh, about 8 o'clock this morning, it all started. Yeah, you uh, photobombed the news, which is something I, yeah. I can appreciate. The, fo- the morning news, the local Fox affiliate was doing a remote from the Fado pub down the street. And uh, I was there as I am every St. Patrick's Day, uh, drinking Guinness and eating bangers and mash at 8 in the morning. And uh, yeah, that's, they, they open at 6. I sleep in <laughs> till 8. And, uh, yeah, and they were doing a remote, and I just noticed, so I went over and, you know, did one of these uh, uh, on camera, and then people uh, social media it right away. <laughs> and I love the idea that, like, you have your own television show. Uh, you're well, I also have my own television, if I can brag, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, if I can brag for a second. Very impressed. But, <laughs> but you still, you see the TV, and you're like, I got it. That's the comedian in you? 
Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we got nothing better to do uh, than <laughs> go stand on the TV. And also, the guy running the camera, I could tell, was going to not try to move away. Like, I could tell he knew who I was. Uh, so I was it was kind of could... between me and him a little bit. Uh, I was hoping he could care less and hated his job, I would <laughs> assume. <laughs> that, that might be the case as well. Yeah. Uh, great to have you on. Thank you for having me. I, yeah, as you know, I know little to nothing about wrestling. Perfect. Yeah. Only I, a very inside wrestling show here. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy watching you do it. Thank you very much. And you did. You came and saw me wrestle. I did. I saw you wrestle at the First Avenue in uh, Minneapolis, which is cool, because that's the where Prince came up, of course. Oh, and, and it was like and right when he died, too. He, well, Sorry. now that you mention it, he, did, he had just passed. <laughs> 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 but we still had a fun time there in his memory. <laughs> yeah, I definitely celebrated. <laughs> Prince. I think, doesn't this very hotel or one of these new hotels in downtown Austin has a big picture of Prince outside? It's one of those pictures that the closer you get to it, it gets, it gets fuzzier and fuzzier. So to get a good look at it, you have to stand across the street, which is how I felt about Prince in general. Oh, I was going to say, maybe it got fuzzier and fuzzier because you were high as a motherfucker. Oh, right. That might have been it. No, it doesn't really make you uh, see things or get, you know, fuzzy visions per se, at least not the weed I've had. Yeah. Uh, wrestling. Let's talk a little wrestling. All right, if you insist. I, uh, you know, I love movies. I have a podcast about movies that you appear on uh, frequently or a few times so far, but you have a, you're a guest for life as far as I'm concerned. Hey. And uh, they have, uh, you know, so I, I wanted to bring the movie aspect into this conversation yes. and talk about wrestlers in movies. And I found uh, a site. You did some uh, homework, huh? on the web. I, Well, you know, I looked at my phone. <laughs> I found... The first thing that comes up when you say top performances by wrestlers in movies. So this is actual wrestlers performing in movies. And uh, this place called Goliath.com has a top eight. All right, now, is Goliath a known thing? I, I don't, don't know. Okay. It's, a, you know. it's one of those sites that has lists of things. And uh, it's the first one that came up on Google. So they're either paying somebody off or they're a good site. Or both. So, how do you want to do it? How do you want to... I want you to guess. So, uh, what, are, what does it say the qualifications of the top movies? Are? Is it money being made? No, Is... it's just... You know how these lists go. It's just some one jerk sitting in a room. <laughs> oh, what list am I going to write today? How about wrestlers and movies? Let's do this. All right, if I was a schmuck on Goliath.com, another I want to see word. if you can get all eight. All eight? Think of the most iconic, famous, known... Performances by real wrestlers in big movies, and I think you could do it. I okay, wrestlers in movies. All eight of them. Yeah. Okay, no holds barred. Am I right? Yeah. No holds barred. This asshole says no, but it is. What it's is number that? One. Uh, Hulk Hogan and and Tiny Zeus Lister battle to the end in one of the uh, in a movie called No Holds Barred. Yeah. Yeah. See, I think this is these movies are more popular than that. <laughs> no offense to No Holds Barred fans. But you're on the right track. Uh, in my head, it's the most popular about. movie of all time. No holds barred. Uh, okay, Andre the Giant in The Princess Bride. Yes, Thank absolutely. You. That one comes in at uh, number four on their list. I, I personally would put it number one, because whenever I get a chance, I ask if anybody wants a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you asked if, who killed your father. <laughs> No, that's not his line. No. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't go around saying I'm in, I'm an ego Montoya. <laughs> I am Andre Rusimov. <laughs> Holy crap! You knew his last name. Oh, I go inside. Yeah. <laughs> I have a pathetic life. Because I always thought his last name was just the Jant, <laughs> and he just split it up. And all right, so uh, you got one out of the eight. Uh, what I, else you got? I'm gonna say. Uh, Terry Funk in Roadhouse. Why did I get laughed I thought at? You were gonna, I thought you were going to be so good at this. Oh, man. <laughs> Hulk Hogan in Suburban I mean, Road, Commando. Roadhouse is an amazing uh, movie. There's no, Jesse no Ventura in The Running Man. Wow, you really... You're, you're, it's like you're too good at it. Scott Flash Norton in Over the Top. <laughs> Austin Local, kind of. He arm wrestles Stallone in that? Uh, he was... He, he, I had him on my podcast. He won the actual over-the-top contest in order to be an extra in the movie. Whoa, so he doesn't even... He, there's like a little bit of or anything? No. You just kind of see him. 
getting ready. Yeah. Greasing and up his elbow. <laughs> Does he drink motor oil in that movie? No, that's somebody else. Um, All right, think about it. What do you think the number one, like, a wrestler shows up in a movie oh. and it's just a huge ass movie? Like, people love it throughout the world. The Rock, the fairy tale. All right. <laughs> I mean, The Rock is on here, but that's not the movie they cite. Roddy they, Piper, They Live. They list. <laughs> now we're talking. That one. Uh, so the, the Rock is number three, but they just list a couple of his movies, Fast and Furious franchise and The Rundown. But then, uh, who'd you just say? <laughs> the Rock. Fair, no, no, Roddy Piper, They Live. And They Live, yeah. That's got to be in here, right? That would be ridiculous if that wasn't in here, but I'm not seeing it. I was going <laughs> to... I was going to ask right? you if your, if your sunglasses were those of They Live, but I'm looking at the side <laughs> of your sunglasses, and it's a My Free Cam sunglasses. I know. I, they didn't have any Brazzers sunglasses, so I, we're at so the I Brazzers settled for room. these. <laughs> I can't believe They Live didn't make this, uh, this list of, this puny list. All right, why don't you spit them out for me, Doug? All right, I'm going to spit them. Uh, oh, he did make, he was number eight, number eight. Which I think it's that's one or two mm -hmm. uh, that, that that sequence where he and Keith David fight, or is it David Keith? Oh, it's always confusing because the, there's two guys in the yellow pages. It's David, comma Keith. Yeah, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin in a motion picture called The Condemned. Come on, right? Is that a weird one? It's all right. Okay, uh, Macho Man Randy Savage in Spider-Man. Spider -Man. That's a pretty big one. Oh, somebody's snapping into a Slim Jim right over there. Uh, Hulk Hogan in Rocky Three. Can't believe you met Clubber Lang. There's a whole list of Hulk Hogan goodies, though. No, that's true. That's a good point. Um, and then uh, we already said Peanut and uh, The Rock. And coming in at number two, Jesse the Body Ventura in Predator. Okay. Predator, which they're remaking Predator, and I'm, I'm pretty psyched about that, to be honest with you. With Jesse. I know. You, you don't want your classics fooled with, but Shane Black himself is writing and directing it. I'd be okay if James Adomian played the role of Jesse Ventura. If he Ventura. played the role of Jesse Ventura, and I'm going to get that Predator. Yeah. I'm not as good at it as he is, and I'm about to cough because I did it. Um... <laughs> Number one, you want to try one more, take one more swing? Do you guys, am I missing yeah, let's, something? Let's take it to the audience. Yes, sir. Dave Bautista in oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Number one, yeah, and the sequel uh, will be out soon, and, and his uh, scenes in the trailer are very funny. Do you know how weird the wrestling world is, Doug? Here's the biggest question of any Q&A on Reddit, and I want you to answer, maybe you know the answer. I how big it. is Dave Bautista's dick? <laughs> That comes up on Reddit? Consistently. <laughs> Back me up, please. Yeah. I've gotten in it. Wait, I just said... Nope. Nope. What did you say? I said... I was going to say I've gotten it, and then it sounded like I've gotten in it, and I'm just backing myself off. Into, so you don't, so you don't even have a guess how big it is? Do I? Yeah. I think it's a solid, girthy one. I just want to know if they, if they paint it the same color as, as the rest of his body <laughs> yeah. in, in Guardians. Like, like he's a method actor. He's like, paint my dick, too. Yeah. <laughs> also, there was a point where he came out wearing all blue once. And uh, what would that be? A blue tea. Blue tea. His name was blue tea. <laughs> <laughs> so I think his name, nickname would be, uh, uh, or I think his, his dick would be painted blue. Yeah. Okay. That's my guess. Um, well, that was a fun game we played. It was very fun. <laughs> that was a nice use of my time on your show. Awesome. Uh, Doug, plugs, Doug plugs, which is a thing that you say. Yeah, uh, DougLowesMovies.com for all my, uh, you know, info. And then uh, I'm rushing over to do a show at the Ritz right now, so uh, why tell you guys about it? Because you can't go. You're going to stay here and enjoy the rest of this fine program. But uh, tomorrow at the State Theater up the street on Congress... Uh, I'm going to do a Doug Loves Movies taping at uh, 5 o'clock. It goes roughly 5 to 6.30. And, of course, badges will uh, get uh, whisked right in. But even if you don't have a badge, you can uh, possibly get into that one. And also, uh, Judge Jeff Jones is a manager in the world of professional wrestling, and now you're a judge. Right? It seems like anybody can become one. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> no, it's really weird that, uh, you know, when we took the idea to Comedy Central uh, for me to be a judge, uh, you know, everyone said, okay, fine. And then the litigants uh, are all right with it because they get to be on TV. And so, yeah, I, I might be the first, you know, wor- working judge that didn't study law ever. And you're gr- at and, all. And you're great at it. And I'm watching it on Comedy Central. Uh, Thanks, Monday dude. Thursday. Doug Benson, Thanks ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Cole, Cole Cabana, everybody. Hey. All right. I have now gotten a weird contact high. Uh, hmm. Are you stealing my swag? Just checking it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, please welcome the next guest. Uh, uh, to the the couch slash chair, Leva Bates, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Leva. Hi, I made it. You <sighs> feel free to take that out or keep... yeah, I think we'll take it out. This is awkward. This is. I feel. Hi. For the audience at home, she's swinging a <laughs> there microphone. We go. Hi, Leva. Hi, I you... found you guys. I went to the wrong place, so. And she's here now. Yeah. Uh, you're, so known cosplayer in the world of professional wrestling. I am. What, are we a thing today? Are you, are you kind of Roddy Piper? I am not Roddy Piper. This is just actual everyday clothes. Okay. So uh, it's uh, St. Patty's Day. I wanted to wear my Wrestle Circus shirt to uh, support. So I was like, I need something green on the bottom. Hey. So I'm like, I need something green on the bottom. And I was like, oh, look, I have the skirt. So I legit just found the skirt. The socks go with the shirt. And then the hat goes with the... I'm a, I'm is the hair green? It is slightly. It's blue and green. It's apologize for, for the St. Hair. Patty's Day? Huh? For St. Patty's Day? No. Or for your support of TuneIn Radio, sports music news podcast think, audio Yes, that's exactly why. <laughs> Perfect. Why. Yeah, I just needed a change. I had the black it, with tips... For so long, I needed a, a thing. All right. Uh, we're here at South by Southwest, which I think is, oh, I don't even know. It's become its own maniac, I feel. Really um, but mu- is it, it's music number one-ish? Mu- oh, okay. I, when I think South by Southwest, I think of the musicians of Austin playing maybe on the fringe, kind of like the Edinburgh Fringe, how it was originally something else and then turned into a friend show about comedy. Um, but I want to know, uh, have you, because you, you do a lot of cosplaying, have you cosplayed uh, music cosplaying? David Bowie. David, okay. A- yeah. In a wrestling match? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, it was right after he passed away. I came out with gear very inspired by him. Uh, it was in black and silver, though, instead of a brighter color, just because of, you know, morning. So, plus I was Wait, also the show doing was in the kind morning? of a darker thing at the time, so. <laughs> Sorry, I stepped on my own joke, which was awful. <laughs> awful. 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 Yes. Where was that at? When was that? Uh, last year. It was about, what, January of last year, right? I don't know. Yeah, that's I've... when he passed away. Yeah. Also, Pretty sure Time Hop told me it's about a year ago I was dressed up as David Bowie, okay. so. That also be, seems to be a theme of me talking about dead uh, musicians. I apologize. <laughs> um, have you ever dressed up like George Michael before? I have not, unfortunately. I've, okay. I haven't got there yet. He, he probably would have dug it. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing I think which is, well, you've, you've gained this new fame, dare I say, from being a cosplayer. Well, I don't know. You tell me on, on, on what horizon you see the Blue Pants character uh, taking over your career or the addition of it or... I think it just kind of helped. I think it kind of brought me into the light a little bit because uh, Blue Pants was actually cosplay. It was X-Men gear that I had to hide the X because of copyright uh, infringement. So, so. For, so for context for anyone, Leva was... And, and maybe tell us a little bit going into that. Uh-huh. You showed up on WWE, uh, I won't say TV, network programming. Yeah. And then you all of a sudden like weirdly got yourself uh, a spot <laughs> as a star in NXT, right? Uh, yeah, I went for like a year and a half. For like, I think I was on like, what, 15 times? You had wrestled 15 or gone 15 times? Uh, some of them were like run-ins or just appearances, small like, hey, I'm here. Like one of them was, uh, wow, why do you keep being... Bringing up people that died. When uh, Dusty Rose passed away, they had me as part of the big thing. So I have done weird uh, DVD appearances, like for the Dudley Boys. Uh, their DVD, I uh, show up on there. It's like 
Random, where's Waldo? Where's Blue Pants? I just keep popping up random places. But I like the idea here in the Brazzers room of you going, I do these weird DVDs for WWE, <laughs> for the Dudley Boys. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, uh, a little bit. you know <laughs> and so you show up and then like one day they're like we need no because the audience like made you a thing correct yeah it was it was if it wasn't for them kind of going nuts about the whole blue pants thing i wouldn't have been called back so take me into the situation you're just called up for a regular sh- you're doing you're going there maybe trying to get a job or maybe just like they can pay you a couple bucks and you're happy about working on a Wednesday or whatever. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was pretty much, hey, do you want to wrestle? They literally called me that day. They're like, hey, we saw your uh, recruit page. Are you able to come in and work tonight? Uh, Is the WWE the army all of a sudden now? (laughs) Yeah. Do they have recruit pages? They legit, they have a recruit page. You, uh, that's where they call like 90% of the people they use now is oh. off the recruit page. And it's just an office and John Cena's sitting there behind the desk. <laughs> and like, if you don't do it right... Thanks, Sean. Got me the job. Yeah, you <laughs> so the recruit page said, hey, she looks, she's a thing. She's wrestling down here. Come wrestle somebody. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. I was supposed to be a uh, talent enhancement, actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, Here in the Brassers room. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I showed up. And it, still, even at the time, it wasn't anything. I, they were going to call me down because it was a tag match that ended up being interrupted. And like, hey, we have time. Carmella, do you want to wrestle? Hey, girl in the blue pants, come down. So, so uh, even in the back, they were like, blue pants girl. Yeah, it was, it was a joke. Uh, that ends on a cast. They were going over their promo in the ring, and I was waiting to, to find out. You know, I sit next to Sarah Del Rey, actually, and uh, we were waiting to find out exactly what exactly we, I was supposed to do. And they are going over the promo, and at the time I was wearing the blue pants because I forgot workout pants. So I was like, I just throw the, these pants on with a T-shirt. And they're like, hey, uh, girl in the blue pants, uh, come on down. And she leans over. She goes, well, I guess you're wearing the blue pants tonight. I'm like, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> so... I- and That's how it took off. And I, then I, the crowd went nuts with it. Yeah. I think it was a mixture of, instead of me going mad, hey, those are my blue pants. I was like, yeah, I love my blue pants. What's wrong with my blue pants? Were you upset, were you upset that you couldn't just, cosplay anymore now as the ex-woman? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Actually, it's always blue pants. Anytime I wear that gear, it's blue pants. So, yeah, I'm no longer Leva from the X-Men. It's <laughs> first class. I'm... Blue pants. <laughs> and now you've kind of gotten this opportunity to... Were you traveling, like, international and stuff before? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, well, because of this, I believe. I mean, I did Switzerland before, blue pants, randomly. But then... How do you randomly do Switzerland? <laughs> no people. Uh, actually, a guy trained with the Dudleys. was from Switzerland. Yeah. Trained there for, like, a few months. Left and was writing some shows. He's like, I'm doing an international showcase. But how did he sound? You have to do his impression. Um, okay. Hey, Leva, I'm doing an international showcase. Most girls suck. You don't suck. So come and wrestle for me. I'm like, oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> it's always good to know as a performer, I'm booked because I don't suck. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I got to go to the UK, Germany, Mexico, Canada. Pretty much, yeah, just all over. Just Where, where'd you wrestle in pants. Mexico? Huh? Where'd you wrestle in Mexico? Uh, I wrestled. Uh, Did you wrestle Lucha Ladies? I was in uh, Laredo. Laredo. I, I don't remember. Pretty sure Masters that's Texas, was on the no? show. Uh, Everyone's agreeing. Teddy that's Hart Texas. was on the show. <laughs> we are we still with me? Uh, that we're te- that's Texas. <laughs> yeah. What part of Mexico? Uh, Houston. <laughs> wrestled. It was, like, right across the border. So pretty much we were staying on the Texas side, Mm -hmm. and they would, like, van us over because I guess it wasn't a very safe area. Mm -hmm. So they would van us over, don't get out, don't look at anything, don't touch anything, wrestle. Okay, come back now, let's go back. Scary, right? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to play around, like, no, 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 (laughs) no. You were trying to go away from the area? I was just like, I want to see things. They're like, nope, nope. Because I've done those Mexico border shows. And, like, very scary. And they, like, told me, like, the day before people had been murdered. And the shows that I did were, like, ran by the mafia. No. <gasps> yeah. And they said it was way safer safer that the mafia had our back as opposed to the police. Wow. And that's one of those moments where, like, I wouldn't brag to my mom, but I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll go for it. Um, and um, 
I, I did want to say that I do, I'm pretty sure you're from Florida, right? Yeah. And I remember you coming to the FIP shows years ago. Is that correct? Yeah. And as a fan. And then I got, uh, when I started training as a manager. So were you around when I managed or was it when I, I was a fan? I, I think just when you were coming around the shows. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's when I first moved. Yeah. yeah. Where'd you move from? Uh, I moved well, all over. I'm originally from Kentucky. <laughs> I know. Hi, y'all. What's going on? <laughs> My family talks like this. Um, but I don't. <laughs> uh, but I lived in Michigan for a while. I was working at a dude ranch as an entertainer there after graduating. Uh, then I was like, well, I don't want to live in Michigan anymore because I don't like snow. So I did one and a half seasons, and then I left. And I'm like, where should I go? My best friend, who also worked there, moved to Florida to do makeup. She was taking the Joe Blasco School of Makeup. She was like, you should come down here and do stunts. Be Sarah Connor. And I'm like, okay. I have nothing else going on. Let's do it. So that's how I moved to Florida, and then that's how I got into wrestling, actually. Because the stunts probably, it was probably very similar, right? Or just the idea of the physicality, maybe? Uh, a little bit. It was because uh, I was, TNA would film there, and uh, I would always go to shows, especially since it's free. I was like, oh, I'll go see these shows for free. But a lot of friends worked at Universal, also were a ring crew, and they were trainees. And they're like, well, if you dance, you do stunts, you act. Why don't you wrestle if you love it so much? And I'm like, I don't know. It wasn't an elective in college. Right. How am I supposed to wrestle? I don't know. You went to the school of hard knocks, it was. <laughs> it wasn't at Murray State University. Oh, okay. So so I was like, I don't know. They're like, you go to school with us. So I went with them one day. Next thing you know, I signed up, and I've been doing it ever since. And they, they, you gave them their money, and they said, here are your blue pants. Pretty much. Welcome to wrestling school. <laughs> Leva, where are you at on the internet? Uh, I am Wrestling Leva on pretty much everything, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. I don't know if you know what Twitch is. Uh, you play video games and get yes. paid for it. Yes, I love Twitch. Okay. Twitch is awesome. Uh, for me, I get to hang out with people when I play video games. I'm going to play video games anyway. You might as well come and hang out with me. Uh, so I, I don't force you to pay anything. I mean, there's a nice little donation button if you want to help me. And there's always like a little like goal right now is uh, money for a microphone so I can do more voice acting. Okay. So that is where I'm at, So I'm going to be a voice in video games and anime and all the other nerdy crap I like. You're doing it all. <laughs> I love it. Leave a bitch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's welcome next to the stage. He is an Austin comedian and has his own documentary on Fusion. Chris Cubis, everybody. <laughs> little microphone here i'm gonna take this out did i say that it was it was a documentary series it was like a documentary special uh yeah it's on fusion uh there's no wrestling in it unfortunately but you get just i got a bunch of money so the premise was that i wanted to live like the one percent for 30 days so give me some money and let me do that and fusion was like sweet let's do it i said you are stupid i thought this idea up on the bus so you could have said i want to know how john cena lives yeah 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 theoretically but i don't (laughs) <laughs> I've, watched like two, I've watched like two episodes of Total Divas. That seems like a nightmare to me. Yeah. He's too tense. Barely, you have to take your shoes off, <laughs> right? Yeah, and I'm not doing any of that. And I heard a rumor that you're not allowed to poop in his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, could I just make it weirdly political right off the bat? Okay, hold on. Jesse Ventura was a thing. <laughs> uh, Bob Backlund was, went, no, voted for president. You're going the wrong direction. Oh. I, uh, I don't watch WWE programming anymore. I've, I canceled my network subscription. I just subscribed to High Spots, and I'm Mindy all the way through. I, I can't. Do not, there you go. I can't support. I, ah, I'm trying not to have a platform, but they bought their way into the Trump administration, and that's like if you paid money to run the lunch room on the Death Star, like you're just a monster. So <laughs> you're not getting my money anymore. And now I just watch. I go to Wrestle Circus all the time. Hell I was yeah. there when Leva did uh, Nakamura. That was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, can, can I just? Leave and make this the our podcast where you shit on WWE. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not show. like they were gonna hire me anyway. I don't. I'm not I taking like a bump. <laughs> what am I gonna do? You were holding off to like get that writer's job. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, um, yeah. Trump was part of four. Remember WrestleMania four and yeah, five? Yeah. And he was there, and he looked like he was ninety then. Sure. Yeah, he looked like he definitely looked like he was in a wig then, and it's only gotten worse. <laughs> Did, were you weirded out? I think which one, and you guys back me up. Maybe it was even, I think it was WrestleMania 5, 
where they had to walk down the steepest steps of, of <laughs> yeah, yeah, stairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I, I thought for sure Ricky Steamboat was going to eat shit on the way to the... And he had his kid with him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that baby? Yeah. No, it looks, it looks terrifying. Uh, yeah, so now I just want... I like... I just indie all the way through. And it's sad because I you grew up watching WWE. Can I tell you a quick story? Please. When I was a little kid... Like a little kid, my mother used to listen to Soupy Sales on the radio. Jesus. I'm old. You're and dating yourself. <laughs> I'm old as shit. Uh, and they had Bobby the Brain Heenan on as a guest uh, leading up into WrestleMania 3. What was, did Soupy Sales have a talk show? He had a talk, he had like a radio show where people he would call in. He was a comedian, in. right? Yeah, yeah, he was like an old time comedian, mm-hmm. but in New York, he had an AM talk show. And, uh, it was like a like whatever he'd have guests or he'd talk. It was a stupid talk show. So for you're old sitting people. there with your sorry, did you say your mom or your my kid? mom? Yeah, you're sitting there with your mom, be- begrudgingly this, listening. Yeah, to Yeah, I was just like I'd be in the house, and then my mom was like, "Oh hey, that wrestler guy you like is going to be on," and I was like, "Oh Hulk Hogan?" And I said, no, it's Bobby the Brain Heenan. <laughs> but of course, I'm going to call in to the radio show and yell at Bobby the Brain Heenan because he turned Andre against Hulk, and I'm six years old, <laughs> and I'm very angry. So I called in to the radio show. I got on. There's a tape of it somewhere. My mom has a, a cassette of it somewhere. And I'm literally just like, I'm, I want to, why did you turn Andre against? And, and he and prepa- just proceeds to shit all over me for like five minutes. And like classic Heenan, like one-liners just riffing. He's like, ah, kid, why don't you grow up? Like just brutalized me. And it was one of the happiest moments of my life. <laughs> We're... Why were you happy about that? Uh, because one, I got like, I think even at the time, I definitely thought it was real when I was a little kid. But I think just being like, able to interact with that world was like, oh, I'm part, like I'm part of it or whatever. So it was just. Oh, did you think like, well, I'm in WWF now. So. Yeah, yeah, I totally, yeah. It was totally like, well, he's going to go on TV and talk about that kid he made yeah. fun of. Well, I guess I'll be wrestling King Harley Race next yeah. week. <laughs> oh, that seems so scary. I have, I sometimes <laughs> have nightmares where I have been booked on. I've watched too much wrestling. I, I, uh, I sometimes have nightmares where I've been booked on a wrestling show. But I don't. I I know that I don't know how to wrestle. Ooh. But I don't know how to back out of being booked in the match. So like I'll be backstage and someone be like, okay, so here's what we're gonna do and tackle drop. I don't know the terms. But right. I listen to podcasts. <laughs> but whatever it is, and I'll be like, uh huh, sure. And then they'll leave. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, what am I gonna do? That happens to me a lot. Because I just had an episode with uh, best friends Trent and. Uh, Trent and Greg, I was gonna say. Trent, sure. Trent and Trent. Dust, Chuck Taylor. And Chuck Taylor, yeah. I, I forget their wrestling names really. And they, and we were talking about our wrestling dreams. Where the, sure. For the for the wrestlers, it's my music is playing, right, the right. boots aren't being tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And never had had I thought that I guess non wrestlers had wrestling dreams. I, well, I, it, it's weird because wrestling is taking up way too like between the number of podcasts I listen to and now the shows I watch or the shows I go to, it's just like that's half of my like my like Entertainment taking in is just wrestling. So it's implement. So it's just, yeah, I just listen to podcasts when I fall asleep. And I got Bruce Pritchard in my ear while I'm trying to take a nap. For three hours. For three and a half <laughs> hours every week. Um, what's the comedian nightmare? Uh, there, I mean, there's I a- can tell you what the Russian nightmare is. <laughs> it's Nikita <laughs> there, Koloff. There you go. Um, I, the comedian nightmare would be like, I think it's like, uh, well, there's obviously just bombing, but you kind of get over that once you do it enough. Uh, it's more that the nightmare is always that no one shows up. Mm. Like, you're headlining, and then you walk out, and it's just an empty room, but then the, heart, the owner's like, we booked you, you're doing your set. So you just have to stand in front of an empty room and try to tell jokes, which has actually happened, which is, I think, why it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, have you ever implemented um, any wrestling into your sets or comedy? or uh, Not so much. Um, it's, I base it on the crowd. Like, if I have a crowd where it's like, Okay, there's some T-shirts I see, or, or just like a younger whatever crowd. I've done some like, no offense, nerd shows and uh, and like conventions or whatever. It offends and then, me. Then it you can work me. that in. Let's be fair. I mean, I love wrestling and I'm a fan, but some of the fan base can be a little autistic sometimes. I uh, I was at I was at the supermarket. This is not a lie. I was at the H E B. You know who I'm talking about. I was at the H E B. I was at the H E B like two weeks ago. It's a supermarket chain here, and a guy was wearing your shirt. I was wearing your I uh, Star. Colt shirt, and a guy walked up to me and was like, is that a Colt Cabana t-shirt? Nice. And I was like, yeah. And then he just ran away. That was the entire interaction. And I was like, all right, man, I appreciate that. Good l- I know it's awkward to be in front of humans, but... That was good. <laughs> I was going to say, good for him for making yeah, that interaction. Yeah, he made that interaction happen, for sure. Which is kind of... Oh, man. Because yesterday, I saw somebody in an Art of Wrestling t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, 
contemplated Catch going up to him, <laughs> and I didn't, and I ran away. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. And, and, like, not out of, like, I'm too cool, out of, like, I can't take the anxiety of, of walking up to, like, yeah, and having yeah, a conversation. Yeah. I've got to go. So I get it. Yeah, for sure. I get it. Have you, have you ran, because, I mean, you're a touring comedian. Sure. Um, have you ran into wrestlers, a wrestler profile? It's happened. I, uh... Why do you say wrestler profiles? I'm not sure what that means. Wrestler I, uh, personalities is what I meant. Watch your toe. I'm about to drop a name. I smoked a joint with MVP. Nice. Uh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me uh, saying yeah. that in the slightest. He's uh, actually happier and wants now people to give him joints. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I was opening for Ralphie May, and he was at the show, and... Uh, we hanging out afterwards and smoking a joint in the patio, and he proceeds to tell me like his life story, and it's an interesting fucking story, mm-hmm. you know. MVP getting arrested, and they're robbing a casino boat, and the cops are coming, and it's, it's fucking insane. Uh, and we had this conversation about there are some sort of there's sort of some parallels in like the like coming up in the comedy world and coming up in the wrestling world. Not, there's, there's a lot, so many for yes, sure, of course. Just like. You know, you're making a very little bit of money at first. You're traveling around. Maybe somebody who's, like, higher up on the food chain vouches for you. So now you get, to, like, I get to open for them or they get you on a show, whatever it might be. There is a lot of that crossover. Uh, there is a point where it stops because I feel like the wrestling world has this way more rules just based on what I listen to a podcast. Sure, I don't yeah, know, like, I'm you go backstage, if you don't shake the right hands, or somebody's going to shit in your bag or whatever. If you shit in Bill Burr's bag, he's going to call the police. That's not a thing you can just do <laughs> in the real world. You're allowed to do that in yeah, wrestling. Yeah, f- from what and people Wait, think it's hilarious. Hold on, but Bill Burr can easily shit in your bag. I'm calling the cops. That is a hate <laughs> crime. If he, Bill Burr <laughs> shits in my bag... Some Tawana Brawley shit. I, I'm sorry. That was a reference just for Mike. You're, um, you're gonna call the cops on that? Absolutely. Bill? Every time I hear that story about JBL abru- abusing somebody in the shower, oh, uh, I'm like, that is a sexual assault. Which is that is not hazing. <clears throat> Alleg- allegedly, 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 <laughs> allegedly, that is a sexual assault. I'm sorry. I don't want to get no, you sued on your podcast. No, that is a sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> the act of him doing it for sure is alleged. Um, but also, like, but also, you guys are just. It's a different. I don't know. I'm still scared of you. And not you. You're, you're not. You're, I, I, uh, I was at the last Wrestle Circus. Don't mean to keep plugging your show. And I just saw Brian Cage in real life for the first time. Oh, man. And I was like, no, nope, no. Nope, you're too big. You're too big to be around. I get drunk and say stupid shit sometimes. Right. And there's no stopping you. If I say some dumb shit to you, you can just rip me in half. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't even be a fight. You would just split me down the middle. It's scary. It's scary. Still. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but Jesus. That's a finishing move in wrestling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He hit me with a fatality. It, it's like a loud, yes, yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah. He is essentially Johnny Cage, who I used to was, think was called Johnny Cake, for anyone <laughs> that cares. Which I thought was a good reference. For sure. Um, Chris, great. Where are you at on the internet, buddy? Uh, ChrisCubesComedy.com, at ChrisCubes on Twitter. Uh, I got a cast show called Canceled. My podcast Canceled. We watched TV shows that only lasted one season. We're uh, in, please. Did you do the Roddy Piper? We did. Ventura? We did. There, it only it was only a pilot, but right. we did cover it. Nice. It's called Tag Team. It's fantastic. <laughs> it actually legitimately is pretty good. Is it? Like, I mean, it's very eighties, but like. It has a Parks and Rec positivity to it, where they're just best friends who will do anything they need to help their buddy, and it's also cops. It's just super fun. But Park and Rex was written hilariously. For yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is kind of accidentally hilarious. But that same positivity of, like, be good people and be friends or whatever is kind of in there. I like it. And I like anything where they treat the wrestling like it's... Uh, lack of a better word, real, like it's not a, a, an entertainment thing. And I like when people call it the wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Very British of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, too much progress in my life. Um, and they do that thing where like, the reason they have to stop being wrestlers and become cops is because they refuse to take a dive and they get blacklisted from wrestling. Tap so then they the have best to, of us. So then they have to go... They have to go be cops. It's yeah. pretty great. So that's, that's what happened to me <laughs> and, why I, and why I became Officer Cole Cabana for Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Awesome. Um, and then you also, you're also can be found oh, down I'm here on the doing... road, all over the place. Uh, if anybody's in... I know a lot of out of town. If you're in Vegas, I'm in Vegas next month for the Crapshoot Comedy Festival. It's going to be real fun. I'm at Moon Tower here in Austin. If you're from... Anybody from Austin? Yeah. Oh, fucking nice. Uh, I run a show at, uh, every, the first Wednesday of every month at uh, King B. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> 
King B. Uh, I run a show called The Sting at King B first Wednesday of the month, and I'm running every Monday at Barracuda in April, so come out and see some comedy, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Chris Cubis, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, buddy. That was great. Okay, uh, every single week we have a song of the week on the show. So right now uh, I'm going to take a quick break and, hell, uh, and talk about our sponsors, and then we will be back with our next guest. That's right, we do have some sponsors this week, and let's show them a little bit of love. Stamps.com. I use Stamps.com. I ship with Stamps. I just revamped coldmerch.com, and now I've been shipping everything with Stamps.com. We're using the internet for everything these days. You're listening to this because of the internet. This is not a radio show. This is an internet audio show. Why are we still going to the post office? Who knows? Get your postage on demand with Stamps.com. Anything you can do at the post office, you can do at Stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package using your own computer and printer. Stamps.com, it never closes. Get your postage work done 24-7. Many a times I've came home from Tokyo, Japan, and I've started doing my orders at 2 a.m. And I remember when I first started shipping the first Wrestling Road Diaries. I mean, I was getting so many orders, and it was amazing, but the post office work, it was like the main work. I wasn't getting anything else done. That's when I changed to Stamps.com, and now I just do it all from my apartment, and you should too. Use my code COLT for this special offer. Four-week trial, it includes postage and a digital scale. Use stamps.com. And before you do anything, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in COLT. Stamps.com. Enter the code COLT. Never go to the post office again. And we're also brought to you by a new sponsor, Me Undies. I'm talking underwear. Maybe you got your own wardrobe down, but what about that stuff underneath? I think underwear is a pretty overlooked garment. I mean, that's what's protecting the goods, right? All right, what is me undies? It's soft, feel good undies delivered right to your door. They're designed in Los Angeles and they're made from sustainable sourced micromodal fabric, which is three times softer than cotton. I mean, they're soft. These are softer than soft. They come in different colors, shades, and patterns, tailor them to your style. And you can also save time and money by opting for a monthly subscription if you want. But you don't have to do that. But what you can do is save 20% off your first pair when you go to MeUndies.com slash Colt. Go revamp your underwear drawer. Stop getting the same plain, boring five-pack from the store. Get 20% off MeUndies at MeUndies.com slash Colt. Once again, MeUndies.com slash Colt. And one more quick note, Pro Wrestling Tees is having a 15% off special the weekend of WrestleMania with the code MANIA. Cool? Cool. Back to the show. Please welcome musician extraordinaire, wrestling, wrestler podcast, amazing human being, Open Mike Eagle. Yeah. Who has brought his wrestler bag. Hey, buddy. How are you? Good. I'm in the Roly bag fraternity with you. Do you know that there's like a story? I forget. I don't know what it was, but it's been passed down that like Randy, I guess you weren't. So for years, you weren't allowed to bring roller bags backstage because it was frowned upon. Who's Be- frowning at roller because bags? Because real wrestlers carry their, ge- carry their gear. On a bag, on a stick? Like is Jake that... the Snake Roberts. All oh, right. <laughs> what you didn't know is Jake Roberts had, had his gear in that bag. Oh, in the snake bag? In the snake bag, yeah. He had his gear in the bag with the snake. Yeah, but the snake would sizzle its way out. No one would ever see the, the gear underneath it. That's so weird. And like Macho, I guess, so I guess Macho Man would always, like he never... He would never. He never went to the roller bag. Like when everyone was doing roller bag, he was so outlaw, underground, like awesome dude. He'd always come in. He was the world champion with just like a a little shitty or bag, like a laundry bag, yeah. <laughs> full of full of important things. And I could picture it. Oh God, I don't know if you can picture it. These guys, you guys are fucking maniacs. Man. Well, thank you. <laughs> I am a maniac. Um, you have a podcast now. I do. I do. I have a few, actually, but I have one that's very appropriate to talk about here. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the first one first. Okay. Or not, because we were put together by a fan who said that we were very, like, our lives are very common of kind of, like, underground artists doing it ourselves. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very similar to what you were talking about, with Chris. Like, me, me being a rapper, especially an indie rapper, it's very much the same path. Uh, as comics and, and wrestlers, as individuals who travel around kind of by themselves. They, like when you are your own brand, basically, and you have to travel and entertain. You know, and do you set up your own gimmick table? I do. 
<laughs> that's why I have a roly bag. You have the roly bag there. And so that podcast is that's that's different than Yeah, my personal podcast is called Secret Skin, and that's when we first got in touch was it for that. It's an interview show It's very much stealing from Mark Marin uh, and just with all of my friends instead of his friends. Mm-hmm. And um Oh you too? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I feel we've all done that. <laughs> right. Matter of fact, you know, I got on Mark Marin's show sending him a drunken email about when you were on his show. Oh, go on. That's how I got on it. Because I was like, why don't you have me on your fucking show? You had shitty Colt Cabana. He's not even verified on Twitter. I wasn't at that point. Actually, my, my drunken emails are very, they're fucking perfect. Like the, the grammar and all that is, is excellent. The drunk part is me actually pressing send on it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it could be a bad idea, but it's going to be worded beautifully. And it was just all about how like if he could, because in his intro to your episode, he talked about how he could appreciate learning that there was an independent world of wrestling. And that was kind of mind blowing to me. And I'm like, well, uh, I was independent rappers as well. And yeah. I am one and uh, have me on your show. And it worked. Nice. Yeah. That's all it takes, guys. If you want to be on so Mark many drunk Marin's emails. Show. I sent Jordan Peele a drunk DM last night. And it worked. <laughs> Just send the drunk DMs. As long as they're not creepy. Don't don't be creepy. Uh, why did you slide into his DMs? Because I, <laughs> I saw Get Out. Did you see Get Out? No, I wanted oh, badly. God damn it, I know, didn't I know, make I know. any sense to you at all. I tweeted oh, something. Don't ruin it for me. I won't at okay. all. But I tweeted something uh, that referenced the movie, um, and he, I saw it, and he retweeted it and said it'd be a good music video idea. And last night he was talking about something from the movie on Twitter when I got back to my room and I was very drunk, and I was like, well, this is what I thought that thing was about in the movie, into his DMs. And... Uh, he answered it this morning, nice. which is good. Because before that, I was like, oh, my God, why did I do that? Why did I do that? But he answered it this so morning. So you'll be in really... his next movie? Yes. Okay, I think great. that's how that Look works. Look forward to that. Uh, and that's, then... that's casting, his <laughs> drunken DMs. I was on your podcast, Tights and Fights, on the mm-hmm. Maximum Fun. Yes. So, I mean, you're all in on wrestling. Yeah, I, I love it. I actually, I love it so much that I hate watch it every week. I'm, I was very um, uh, fascinated with what Chris just said because... I mean, literally, I hate watched like five hours of wrestling this week, <laughs> you know? And it's like, I get excited to hate watch it. It's really crazy. Cause it's really bad now. It's fucking bad. <laughs> like, like, you know. As he I, looks at a wrestler, I'm sorry, staring no, him in his eyes. No, no, you, no, no. Colt, you're shit. No, good wrestling is great. I go to PWG, I have the time of my life out in LA. But I turn on Raw and I turn on SmackDown and every week I'm there for it and every week I come away from it like, why the fuck did I just do this? <laughs> every and week. every week I get that t-shirt in the mail that I bought and I fucking <laughs> hate myself for it. And I send a personal check to Vince. I don't know why I do it. <laughs> no, it's bad. I mean, they, they got me, you know, because they'll do one or two things in a year they kind of hook me again, mm-hmm. you know, like, because they have the moments, you know what I mean? And the moments happen and I'm there for them. But the week to week storytelling just leaves a lot to be desired. Right well, now. on Tights and Fights, you guys t- kind of talk about wrestling in a fun way. What's like the biggest rant you've had? That's, do, you, do you know something that's really ticked yeah, you off? It was very recently, man. Uh, it was very real. When they had Orton burn down Bray's house, that made me so fucking upset. <laughs> I was so mad because that. It, it made the last, like, four months completely nonsensical that he would do that, you know? Like, it, it was like, oh, my God, so, so wait a minute. And you're the good guy because you burnt the bad guy's house down when he wasn't there? And, like, his dead sister was underneath? And, and like, how am I supposed to cheer for you? You're a fucking awful person. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Maybe he'll shit in your enemy's bag. And... Yeah, no, you know, I, I, don't, I don't understand. But I love it, and I watch it anyway, and I hate it. It's terrible. <laughs> it's odd, odd have, psychological relationship I have with the product. Have you ran into wrestlers on the road or anything? Have you smoked weed with MVP? I never. You're the only wrestler I've ever met. Get I talked to, like, Dalton Castle one time, because uh, we have a mutual friend. But other than that, you're the only wrestler. Did you I've wear ever. a mask? To the ring with him. I was not chance? one of his boys. No. I didn't wear a grass skirt. I think I'd look good as fucking a grass skirt, though. That might be my look for 2018. Um, and then, is it too much putting on, on the putting you on the spot to throw a couple bars down? Are you a freestyler? Or? I, yeah, I, I do the freestyles, but I mean, I need a beat though, because I don't like rapping acapella. That okay, shit, that shit's painful. Am me. I doing the beat? 
we have no beatboxers in the crowd. Are you to, okay? What would a good beat be? A beat is you know any, anything. Oh, we okay. got an extra mic. We got a beatboxer. We got any brave Austin beatboxer? Uh, beatbox is kind of cheap. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> sound is next. Coke Bannon with the brand new sound effects. Yeah, how we do it's never written. I'm on the mic, he's on the mic just spitting. That's what he got. We don't know me. I'm looking fresh to shave my beard and my goatee. That's how I do. Somebody better pay me, because right now I have the skin of a baby. Then that's how I do it. That's my pattern. I still think I'd look good in that grass skirt. That's how I do, and I'm making my noise. Come to Dalton Castle, because I'm one of his boys. And that's just how we do, so don't make me holler. I'm going to be the new champ of Ring of Honor, but that's not true. I respect that business. I don't want to take no bump. This shit looks like it hurts too bad. It makes me mad. <laughs> I love it. I have a rap song about no selling. And I don't know if I should put it on my album because nobody's going to know what the fuck it means. Oh, well, I'll play it for song of the week. All right, well, I'll send it to you. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I, need to, I need to generate some buzz for it in the <laughs> wrestling world because civilians aren't going to get it at all. Uh, where are you at on the internet? Uh, Mike underscore Eagle on the Twitters is the best place to uh, follow me if you're interested in doing that kind of thing. And where can they buy your music? Uh, everywhere where digital music is sold. Uh, so iTunes and Bandcamp and all of that. And then I'm on Spotify. I'm in your pocket right now. There it is. Just look me up and start listening right after this is over with. Open Mike Eagle, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, guys. That was great. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, we have time for one more. It's not this guy coming in. <laughs> it looked like it, though. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Jeff Cobb, everybody. He is so... He's got two roller bags and a jug of water and is so confused as to why he's coming on stage, although he knows that he was a guest. Hi. What's confusing you? Um, I don't know. Do you know I'm how to use a microphone? <laughs> Grab it, just take it out. You didn't know what you were getting into. No, I, you just messaged me and I said, heck yeah. I'm, I made it in the wrestling world if I'm on this. When I said, I'm doing a live show in front of a giant audience. <laughs> like oh, 10,000 people here at the Brazzers room in Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 <laughs> naked screaming fans. Oh, lovely. <laughs> in the audio world, okay? Let's paint a picture for them. Do you, is, do you feel what's now? What's your emotions right now? Oh, I'm enjoying it though. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I didn't know where I was going though. I got lost in the lobby and I looked around and nobody knew anything. So, <laughs> story of my career. <laughs> but I made it. I made it here. Hey, do you know where Cole Cabana is at? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just said podcasters like, go up mm, that way. Mm. How are you? I'm wonderful. A little jet lag, but yeah. Are you? Yeah. From what? Um, I did a two week gig in Europe. With uh, Germany and Ireland and England, and got this lovely sweater to show for it. And I got paid too, I think. <laughs> Does that matter? No, I, I'm more for the t shirts. Yeah, I have this great currency. <laughs> so my whole drawer is just t shirts and hoodies and whatever free stuff I can get. Mazel tov. <laughs> when, when, when did you get back? Um, uh, geez. Tuesday? Okay. Tuesday, and then I flew out here. Right. I still haven't adjusted. Are you new to the international scene? Is that Have you been doing international gigs? Um, last year was the first time um, that I traveled for pro wrestling. So it was fun times. But before that, you were just... Oh, the amateur wrestling. I was traveling. Did some... Would you do a lot of international stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm very uh, intrigued, because you're kind of newish to wrestling. Maybe not at this point, huh? Uh, well, I moved to California, like, 2013, uh, but I didn't really... I got stuck in the California bubble, if you will. Right. Until uh, where were you before that? Uh, Hawaii, wrestling in Hawaii. Yeah. For uh, AZW. Yes, AZW. Oh that's, man, that's where I started off. Were you on the show that I was supposed to go to, but I couldn't because yeah. my finger fell off? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Matt was there, and uh, El Generico was there. So it was Air cool. Generico. El Generico, which is his Sorry. basketball gimmick that he does. <laughs> Air generic. Air. Yeah. Yes, and I was supposed to be there. Oh, that's so sad. I know. I'm, I'm bummed about that. How does... How, so it's kind of funny you said you, you, you found yourself in a, in a California bubble, but if you start in Hawaii, 
I mean, nobody's breaking out of Hawaii to oh, become. That, yeah, that's a super bubble out. Right. I mean, did you have visions of like getting into pro wrestling and just staying in Hawaii and just becoming a, like a star, or was it just like I should learn this in Hawaii because I live here? Well, I, I, I mean, I moved back there to help my grandfather out, and uh, and then I, the wrestling was still going on, so I started training there, and eventually I was like, you know, I can't be out here. No one's going to fly me from Hawaii. Mm-hmm. I mean, they barely want to fly me from California. So right. <laughs> But I get yeah. it. So I had to get out of that little bubble or bigger bubble. Who's training in Hawaii? Is it is it Chief Peter Maivia? Uh Who's not alive? I think he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> That's a theme in this podcast. Don't worry about no, it. Uh, probably like Don. I'll Morocco. be gone soon. No. No. Uh, just local guys out there. That was Donny Don the Rock Morocco out there. He lives out there. So he owns a, a car dealership, but he does not want anything to do with wrestling. Oh, I was going to accept nothing, but you were best friends with Don Morocco. I mean, we're best friends. Nice. <laughs> What are you We're best of friends. I bought a car from him. Yeah, good. I, I did not. <laughs> That's, oh, man. I don't know if I could be a car dealer. You got to do something, though, right? Yeah, I'm, I mean. The Berserker's a car dealer. Is he really? Yeah, John oh. Nord. A little plug for him if you're ever up there in Minneapolis want to buy a Chevy. Kicking doors in and. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> buy this one. Bam. I would. <laughs> him and Brian Cage should be a, a car salesman. Oh Buy this car, okay. <laughs> He's just like that too, right? He's trying to touch his food. You guys you should do that tonight. What's that? Touch his, try to get his food. <coughs> touch his what? His food, which is a code for what? It's real food. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were an amateur wrestler. Yes, sir. You were in the Olympics. Yes, in, in my youth. In my youth. <laughs> the two youths. <laughs> yeah, in, in 2004 I wrestled when I was like. Uh, I guess I'm dating myself, but uh, I was 21 at the time. So that's not a thing. I can't be in the Olympics. Can I be in the Olympics? Yeah. How Anybody? You... Well, I mean, you got to train, I guess. But... <laughs> so tell me how and what and why. Uh, re- uh, I went to Olympics for wrestling. I wish it was like something like, uh, like javelin. I was a big javeliner. Uh, equestrian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so I mean, this is shows my stupidity as a kid. Um, so I joined high school wrestling. Uh, because I thought it was pro wrestling. Perfect. I was like, I really did. please say, because you thought it was pro wrestling, please say. <laughs> and then he did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, it popped dusty when I did the, nice. the tryout thingy. But yeah, I mean, I did it because I thought it was the same thing. And God bless it, it wasn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> Where's the ring? Yeah, but I spent all my allowance money on shoes. So <laughs> on my wrestling shoes, I was like, I got to stick with this. Nobody's going to want my shoes. That same thing happened to me with pro wrestling. I bought the boots. I was like, well, <laughs> I got to do this. Um, so you thought it was professional wrestling. I, so obsessed I, with wrestling as a kid. Yes. And I, did they ever come to Hawaii? Yeah. Um, they used to come a lot. Uh, when I, like, Here in the Brazzers room. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, they used to come like maybe three, two or three times a year. So. Was there any, and there wasn't any, and it was just them no, or nothing, was, right? No, there was indies. Was there? Yeah. As a kid, uh, I remember watching it on, like, the local access. Really? And whatnot. And when I moved back there, like, I just flipped it through the channels, and they, there was uh, two companies running at the time. But if, if you're, let's say, it's 1998, and there's independence on the public access, do you, like, see them on the island while you're around? Are they, like, local stars? No. no. Not at all. No. Story of my life. <laughs> I mean, yes, they are huge. Yeah, stars. thank you. <laughs> they work for Don Morocco. Yeah, <laughs> pushing cars. And... Perfect. <laughs> um, right, and then you. So you must have gotten really good to be in the Olympics. Uh, I guess yes. So. Yeah, I guess. That's an awful yes. question. Yes. What did What did you do? Did you beat out a bunch of people? Uh, I just did uh, qualifying tournaments. But you represented Guam. Is that yeah. right? Uh, Guam's I'm, not Hawaii. No, not at all. Uh, my mom's. My thank mom's you. From thank there. you. <laughs> I'm smart. <laughs> it's in it's in Hawaii, like Texas. Is it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but yeah, I mean, I moved there uh, right before high school. Uh, my grand or my mom's side's from there, and I just stay there and just wrestle for them. Do you know Allie Nussbaum? Who? Allie Nussbaum. No. She was in my junior high, and she moved to Guam. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, not everybody from the islands knows each other. Oh. I'm sorry. I just never knew what happened, to Allie Nussbaum. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck is Guam? Where are you going? That's what Facebook's for. You gotta... uh, I'm under Colt Cabana. It's an alias. She'll never find me. No, you search her. Oh, no, I'm not that weird. <laughs> uh, 
So was there any people like in wrestling? So obviously you, you traveled for wrestling, amateur wrestling. Um, were there people with like that same dream of pro wrestling? Did you guys talk about pro wrestling? Was that like? No, um, I actually think it was it was frowned upon when I was training and whatnot. Um, actually, funny story. Um, in 2007, I was in Colorado Springs training, um, and I didn't. I had no clue that uh, uh, Chaz Betts or Chad Gable uh, liked pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. I had no clue. And so I, I, maybe it's one of those, like, you kind of keep it to yourself kind of things. So. You were in the same, like, camp as him? Uh, well, he did Greco and I did freestyle. So we had different training times, but, I mean, we interacted with each other. We had mutual friends. When you said you were – oh, so you were going to do the Olympics again. Is that what that meant? Yeah, I, uh, I was training for the 2008 one, but then, like, my heart wasn't really into it. Like, I wanted to start pro wrestling. Really? Yeah. So the year before the Olympics. Yeah, I, well, actually uh, – Probably like four months before, I I just pulled out from the last tournament. Really? Yeah. And but had you won, you would have been good. Yeah, I would have gone to the. What are you doing? <laughs> Pro wrestling, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's admirable. Yeah. Maybe I, I should pull out with my match of with Matt Hardy tonight <laughs> to oh, go no. do a set at Esther's Follies. <laughs> No, you do that after. You okay. Do that after. See, and you should have done pro wrestling after the Olympics. Nah, Not it would have that... taken me at a different. W was your mom upset? No, she was. She's supportive, so she's like, you know, just don't get hurt. Okay. Yeah. She already saw. We already saw you, Jeff, and won Olympics. We get it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you lost. You could. <laughs> <laughs> and um, okay, we're winding up, but you um, and now, am, am I allowed to say somebody like you does lucha underground? Uh, whoa. yeah, sure. Why not? I don't know. Allegedly. So there, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's and, a move stealer. <laughs> but I feel Matanza, mm -hmm. like, and the, and Jeff Cobb started really. Jeff Cobb started in the third, but first, second person. Jeff Cobb started becoming like known on the scene after that character kind of showed up. Does that sound right, or is wrong? Is that am I off a little bit? I mean, I think so. I mean, it definitely gave it a, a spotlight, but still, you know, it's. Under a mask, you don't which really is know weird, person. right? Yeah. Um, That's a hard I, transition to make. Is to break away from a, yeah, whoever that masked man is. Yeah, allegedly, right? Um, but no, I think. Um, I mean, I honestly think like I owe my career definitely to like like guys like Chris Hero. Like he definitely pushed for me. Like PW. I mean, can I name drop? No. Okay. Nope. Sorry. Um, <laughs> nope. The, uh, it's I mean, the art of wrestling or nothing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, definitely PWG helped me like get to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I mean. Definitely, but you like and then but you snuck on their map somehow. Yeah, uh, I mean, I had I had a couple guys vouching for me, so thank goodness. So. Right? Who's vouching for you? Uh, Chris Hero. No, <laughs> basically, you owe your career to Chris Hero. <laughs> sure. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> <laughs> so, but where did he wrestle you? Um, at PWG. But you can't get into PWG well, with the voucher of Chris Hero. Well, we 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 were on the same show. We were on the same show once. And, but he had, uh, so he got you into PWG. You're saying, yeah. He, I mean, he vouched for me towards uh, the the powers that be. Right. So where did he see you? You didn't even wrestle him. No, I was supposed to wrestle him, but um, I had to cancel a booking because I did the a WWE thing. Okay. But you, but you, he saw you wrestle and was like, "This guy's awesome." Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. All right. I'll, hey, I thank him every day. And now here you are. Awesome. Now I'm here. Uh, where are you at on the internet, man? Um, I'm getting good at. I'm getting better at that. By the way. Um, the tw the Twitter, the Instagram, the Facebook, it's just Jeff Cobb. Okay. I have no cool thingies to... I think that's the way to go, Jeff yeah. Cobb. You and don't want to, you don't want to fuck with people's emotions. Just yeah. Just say their names. Yeah. And then, um, like, yeah, that's, that's it. Just those three. You got a pro wrestling tea store. Oh, pro wrestling teas. Yeah. Definitely, definitely go there. It's <laughs> under Jeff Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Cobb, ladies and gentlemen. All right, um, that is that is the show for this week. I had now I can't read my own writing. Hold on, hold on. Before we get out of here, oh hey, <laughs> that is the show for this week. Before we get out of here, let's get into some plugs and. Hey, thanks guys. All right, let's give a huge thank you. First of all, to you guys for coming here at the Marriott Brazos Room, sponsored by TuneIn. 
South by Southwest for having me. Uh, huge thanks to uh, all right, huge thanks to you guys, for you guys for listening at home. Thanks to South by Southwest. Thanks for Wrestle Circus for being at South by Southwest and being an amazing promotion. And you guys can watch their iPay-Per-View on uh, their website, WrestleCircus.com. Let's uh, give a hand for our guests, Doug Benson, Jeff Cobb, Open Mike Eagle, Chris Cubis, and Leva Bates. Big thanks to Stu Stone and Cable Guy Jeff, Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music, Dane Miller with some tech. Uh, I have some upcoming events that I will be saying in post, so let's go to me in my studio apartment right now saying those. Hello, live from the apartment. I do have some upcoming events. I also have plugs, though, digitalcult.com and the revamped cultmerch.com, where you can get the brand new Micro Buddies tenor. I'll ship them out to you. Twitter and Instagram at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast or slash Colt Cabana. Just a heads up with the SoundCloud and the iTunes feed. April 17th, up to episode 300, will be gone. Download them now. Don't cry to me later. Or, of course, go to Howl.fm. That's where my storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringes, plus past archives of this show, they're ad free. Howl.fm slash Colt. Use the code Colt. Get a free month. Colt Wrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe a promoter you want to put me in your upcoming show or convention. I got a YouTube channel and I just put up sex slash Tex Ferguson videos that are hilarious. Go check them out. ColtCommander.com is my website. I got a P.O. box. You can send me something fun. Upcoming Friday, March 24th, Cleveland, Ohio, AIWrestling.com. Saturday, March 25th, Windsor, Canada, BorderCityWrestling.com. Sunday, March 26th, London, Ontario, Canada, Smash-Wrestling.com. And I will have Cabanada t-shirts. WrestleMania weekend, Orlando, Florida. Wednesday, March 29th, Atomic Wrestling, FL.com. Thursday, 4 p.m., live podcast with Larry Zabisco in front of you guys. TinyURL.com slash Colt and Larry. Ten bucks, very cheap ticket. 8.30 p.m., WrestleProOnline.com. I'm Wrestling Ryback. Friday and Saturday, WrestleCon, 10 to 5, 10 to 4, respectively. Live podcast at 4 and 3, respectively. Friday night is the WrestleCon show. Saturday night, ROHWrestling.com. Friday, April 7th, South Bend, Indiana. Facebook slash Join the Revolution, RCW. Saturday, April 8th, Baltimore, Maryland, ROHWrestling.com. Friday, April 14th, Mesa, Arizona, PartyHardWrestling.com. Thursday, April 20th, Cape Breton, Canada, Facebook slash ACWA Wrestling. Saturday, April 22nd, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, CapeWrestling.com. And Sunday, April 30th, Austin, Texas, WrestleCircus.com. All right, buddy, back to you at the live show. Wow, Colt in your apartment. Those are some great events. People should go to those. <laughs> I do have some sponsors. Highspots.com. They are an amazing, uh, again, Chris Cubis is only watches Highspots.com and their service. They have an amazing VOD service. Uh, they got rings, gear, masks, uh, anything you need for professional wrestling. One Hour Tees. They help run ProWrestlingTees.com. That's where you can support your favorite independent wrestlers by buying a T-shirt. And TweakedAudio.com slash Colt, the earbuds that I use. I uh, get over 30% off of free shipping just because you listen to this show. Thank you so much. This was a great show. I hope to see everybody at the Wrestle Circus show tonight. This has been the Art of Wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Woo!